You may have seen this channel refer to mixes as within the limitations of the hardware, but without much context. Let's take a look at exactly what sounds the Sega Genesis can make. To talk about the sound of the Genesis, we need to go back to the early 80s, when Sega created the SG-1000 Mark II, re revised as the Sega Mark III, rebranded for international markets as the Sega Master System, later repackaged as the handheld console, the Game Gear. The important part here is this, the SN76489. This chip has three channels of 50% width square waves and one dedicated noise channel. The noise channel comes with the standard two types of noise, random and periodic. The noise channel has four available pitches, A on the fourth octave, A on the third, A on the second, and what we'll call linked. That last pitch actually steals the pitch information from the third square channel and assigns it to the noise channel, so A, 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 or whatever the square is. This allows for a broader range of sweeping random noise. Or, using periodic noise, this lets you write using a pulse wave, if somewhat out of tune at higher notes. With that in mind, let's fast forward to 1988 and the launch of the Mega Drive, or, for Americans, the Sega Genesis in 1989. Also, the portable version of the Sega Nomad. When Sega built the Genesis, they used the Master System as a starting point and simply added to hardware until it was sufficiently next-gen. The relevant addition musically is this chip, the YM2612. This brings six channels of four operator FM synthesis. Combined with the SN chip from the Master System, this provided a total of 10 channels of sound. Additionally, the 6FM channel can be replaced with the 8-bit sample player. The ability to playback samples was heavily embraced for sound effects and music alike. Are you, are you, are you ready? Yeah! Cool! Are you ready? Awesome! Yeah! Three years after the Genesis was released, Sega released an add-on, the Sega CD. With this, you could play back beautiful streamed Red Book compact disc digital audio. But not content with two sound chips, Sega decided to add a Ricoh RF5C164. This added eight channels of PCM sample-based playback. Because of the convenience of Red Book audio, relatively few games took advantage of these eight new channels. The most popular exception is Sonic CD. The past versions of each stage used the RF5C exclusively. Also on the topic of scarcely used hardware... The 32X. The 32X lodged uncomfortably close to Sega's next-gen console, causing the 32X to suffer a very short shelf life. For sound, the 32X adds two additional channels, one left and one right, but the audio is all software mixed from an onboard SH2, meaning you could have multi-channel sound if you wanted. The limited lifespan of the 32X meant that almost no games use this chip for music, much less multi-channel music. The only exceptions were Tempo and Tough Man Contest, both of which used it for drums and streaming audio. Take this very nice intro, for example. You know what time it is. Yo, homie, peep beer! Tempo, check it out, you know, he makes it funky, and he's good to go. Oh! In the end, the Genesis and all of its add-ons had 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 2 plus CDDA equals at least 22 channels of audio. That's more than, for example, the number of letters in Sega's marketing slogan. Thanks for watching. Alright, let's do this part. Subscribe on the left, Patreon on the right, mixes in the middle. You know what to do. See ya.